Hi there everybody, it's Helen from Slim and Stylish and I'm a UK Stamping Up independent demonstrator. And today I have a design team challenge. So you're sure you've heard me mention it before, I am now a design team member for the Stampin' for All Facebook group. And each week there's a different challenge which you're welcome to join along with and it gets featured in all the blog posts, so do that and I'll obviously credit you. But my job this week is to lead a design so my one is being given the title of circles and this is one I've come up with I love it it's so simple it just has four different size circles on the way down I've put on the accents as well and the dimensionals so they're all circular but it's using this gorgeous dapper denim paper there is let me see if I can grab all of them I just got the ones I was going to be using but these are the papers and they're all kind of on the masculine theme but I don't think my card is particularly masculine it could be but it could also be for a lady but it's got all of these cute ones and I love this one with the little bow ties I was really tied I was going to use this one because it kind of fit in with the card but I love the bow ties but in the end I thought just stick with what you're making on the card so this is the card that I'm submitting or already have submitted for this design team. So I'm going to just quickly run through with you how to make it. It's so simple. The thank you was just a tiny little thank you took off the bird banter set here. But this would be perfect for, um, you know, customer appreciation goods, anything like that, because it's just so simple and it can be done in bulk. So that's great. So you just take a piece of very vanilla A4 cardstock and you score it and fold it in half, like that. You like a piece of crumb cake that is half a centimetre less on each side. Okay, half a centimetre or a quarter of an inch less, so you just have this shading around the edge. And then again, you want a very vanilla piece that has that half a centimetre or quarter of an inch in again, so that it all builds up together. Okay. Playing with this piece, I used this designer series paper here in the stripe and I cut it on the stripe as well. So all I did was allowed four stripes of each colour. I didn't measure it, That's I just wanted four stripes of each colour. So put a bit of Tombow on, I have a bit of a guesstimate about where the end of the card will finish. Okay, and then you don't want it to be at the bottom but you don't want it to be probably about a centimetre or half an inch off the bottom there and it won't, needs to be flush to the edges okay so if you use Tombow you can just mess it around and if you use your grid paper that's even better because you can get it exactly straight and where's my snips just snip that off in the catalogue there is gorgeous Knight of Navy corduroy ribbon and I didn't get it because I have the Knight of Navy chevron ribbon. So I thought, well, you already have Knight of Navy. The chevrons wouldn't go with this because it was white rather than very vanilla. But the corduroy ribbon looks really nice. I used the crumb cake weave one. And I grabbed a pencil and I still got it out. And I went roughly so it had just a blue line and a green line and then I mark that round so it's just about there okay and my fuse straight along where that mark was and then just line my ribbon across the back there okay I'm just gonna chop that where do I think about there that is more than enough being very liberal but um, I'm just going to put a little bit of fast fuse there just to make tying the bow easier because I want it to be in the corner there we go I have found that the longer my nails seem to grow the harder it is to tie bows so you can't see what you're doing as well 
think next time I go to the nail place, I'm like, can you cut it short so I can tie bows? There we go. Make the bow look a little bit pretty. There we are. And then you just want your punches. So I have the one, if I do it in order, one and three eighths, two inches, and two and a quarter inches going down. And I'm going to do this in the exact same order. So I want that one first and cut it at two and a quarter inches. There we go. And then, just because I like playing, I'm just going to pop that on top of there so I know I've done it. And this one here is a two inch one. I hate doing this, I don't know about you. I hate punching into a 12 inch sheet of DSP. I feel like I'm kind of ruining the DSP. I prefer it when I have scraps to punch. But to punch a little hole in a 12 inch by 12 inch sheet like this, I feel terribly guilty. I don't know about you. There we go. So that's those. And then you need your three and three eighth inch of a punch and some scrap, very vanilla. Thank you from your bird banter and Knight of Navy ink. So I'm just going to put that on there. It's so small, isn't it? It's really cute. But I wanted something where I could still use the accents because they're obviously circular too, so they'd fit in with my design team post. In the middle. There were so many sets I could use for circular. It was, when I was looking at all the stamp sets, you know, ready to pop, that's a great one. That actually has the circles in it and everything sort of looks circular. So that was what, something I was thinking, all the tabs for everything. But in the end, I decided to just play with the punches. So if I just have a look at these now, work out where I want them. Looks about right there. Yep, so I'm just going to... I've got my snail. There. It's not, that's my fuse. We'll use my fuse. Snail would be fine. It's just mine seems to have gone for a, a walk. It's my fault. I have a class bag and I never then put anything back on my on my desk. If I don't think I need it, I don't put it back. Then I film and realise I'm missing stuff. Okay. So just overlap them all like that. This one here, you're going to want to put a dimension on it, but while I'm waiting for that, I'm just going to colour these in so they can start to dry. I used the largest of the white accents. Okay. And then the smaller of the rhinestones. Mm, two. Okay. Let's grab a dimensional. on the back and then just towards the bottom there so you can still see <coughs> what ever so sorry I've got a drink to the side of me hang on I have this terrible cold but it's left me with a really scratchy throat and this really dry sort of cough and it won't go I'm getting very sulky about it now because I feel I've had it for too long So I've just popped some fuse on there, but again, you can use snail. Just lay that on. I'm just going to do exactly the same. 
and layer it onto your very vanilla card blank like that. And hopefully these are dry now, so I'm just going to take the larger one off. Oh, come off. That'll be fine. And then the two rhinestones. One. Two. There you go. And that is my circle design team challenge. The challenge went live last week. I've put this on today and I'm doing a blog on it today. So anyone who participated in the challenge in the group, I'm going to probably include your cards in there and credit you. <coughs> oh, sorry, but if anyone wants to find either my blog or the post in the group and comment with a circular card of yours, I'll include it and credit you in my blog hop too. So there you go. A circular card for you. Thanks for joining me. Bye.